Hello and welcome to the second video for the second module for fractions. Here we're going to do more fraction arithmetic, but this time arithmetic of fractions involving variables. Make sure we know how to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for expressions involving fractions and variables. Let's start with multiplication and division because those are the relatively easy ones for fractions. For multiplication and division, exactly the same thing is true as when it was considered for fractions with numbers. To multiply two fractions, we multiply numerators and we multiply denominators so that the new numerator is the product of the two original numerators and the new denominator is the product, product of the two original denominators. Nothing else to it. I could try and simplify this expression, but I don't see any common factors. I don't see anything that cancels off. So multiplying these two things together just gives me this one larger expression. It looks like this. That's all there is to it. Nothing else to be done here. For division, also the same thing is true as was true for numbers. To divide two fractions, we multiply by the reciprocals. For things involving variables, this is almost always going to show up as a nested fraction. We're not really going to use the division symbol very often, so we're going to have one of these fractions inside fraction situations. So I'm going to take the denominator, I'm going to flip it, this reciprocal entertain its numerator and denominator, and then I'm going to multiply by the original fraction here. And then I multiply denominators, I multiply numerators, I get my new expression. This time I have y in the numerator and denominator. They are factors of the entire thing. This y is multiplied by the entire numerator. This y is multiplied by the entire denominator. So since they are factors of the entire numerator and entire denominator, I can cancel them off and get a slightly simpler expression. So when I do see a nice cancellation, I will certainly try and do it. And this complicated nested fraction, which is uh, almost difficult to see now under the writing I've done, but this complicated nested fraction works out to this much more simple expression. Now I need to be careful that I'm not dividing by zero at any point in this process. So I'm gonna say that y can't equal zero because the denominators of the original involved y, so there's no division by zero. Also, because the thing I canceled off involved y. And I want to make sure when I cancel off, I'm not canceling off 0 over 0, because that doesn't mean anything. So the thing you cancel off has to be non-zero. And then this new denominator also has to be non-zero. So that means that y can't be the cube root of 6, because if I cube that, I get 6 minus 6, I get 0. So there's sort of two cautions that I have to have for this particular division to think about even though this first one, y not equal to zero, is sort of invisible in the final form, in the final form of the fraction, I can't see that y not equal to zero, but it was part of the process to get me there. Addition and subtraction, like with fractions for numbers, is about common denominators. It's just more complicated now because the denominators, the common denominators, can involve expressions with variables. The basic algorithm that I taught you previously of multiplying each fraction by the denominator of the other fraction still works. That's always going to work. So in this case, I multiply the first fraction by the denominator of the second and the second fraction by the denominator of the first. Again, multiply numerator and denominator by both the same thing. So this numerator multiplied by r minus 1, denominator by r minus 1. This numerator multiplied by r squared, denominator by r squared. Being careful, of course, that r is not equal to 0 and r is not equal to 1, because those are the things that would multiply by 0. I don't want to multiply denominator and numerator by 0, because that destroys the fraction and leads to division by 0. Short of that, I can multiply denominator and numerator by the same thing. And this gives me a common denominator of r squared r minus 1. And now, since the two things have the same denominator, I multiply these numerators through, numerator in the top, r plus 1 times r minus 1. If you FOIL out that binomial, you will get r squared minus 1. This numerator, multiply the r squared in, you get r cubed minus 4 r squared. And now they have the same denominator, so from here to here with the same denominator, I can just combine them into a single fraction with the same denominator, and the addition happens in the numerator. And then from there, I can group things that I want. So typically we put polynomials in descending order of exponents. So I'm going to write this r cubed first, 
I have an r squared, I have a negative 4 r squared, that gives me a negative 3 r squared if I put them together, and the negative 1 shows up there. So I'll simplify a little bit if I can. I could see if there's a factor that I could cancel off there. I don't see one, obviously. So this is a reasonable expression using common denominator of the addition of these two fractions involving variables. It's complicated, but the key idea is still the same thing. We're going to establish a common denominator by, in any particular fraction, multiplying numerator and denominator by the same thing. Because that's the thing we're allowed to do that doesn't change fact fractions. It's trickier to see when you're multiplying by expressions involving variables, but it's no different from multiplying numerator and denominator by 6. You're multiplying it by r minus 1. As long as you avoid the places that would lead to division by 0, everything is good. As with numbers, sometimes you can find a better common denominator than just the product of the two denominators. And that involves things that have common factors. So let's try and do this division. 6 over v squared times v plus 1 minus 8 over v times v plus 1 times v plus 2. In this case, the common denominator is going to involve these common factors, v squared, v plus 1. So I want to think, what can I multiply the first fraction by and what can I multiply the second fraction by to get the common denominator without having to do sort of multiply the whole thing by the numerator of the other. If I look at this carefully, if I multiply the first fraction by v plus 2 over v plus 2, and I multiply the second fraction by v over v, which already I've put into the v squared there, so this one is times v over v, this one is times v plus 2 over v plus 2, then I end up with exactly v squared times v plus 1 times v plus 2 in each of the denominators. So that's a clever way of sort of looking at this and saying, hey, I can find a way of multiplying by something that's relatively simple, it's still a complicated calculation, but relatively simple, and giving me a common denominator. Of course, with these v plus 2s and v's and also the v plus 1, I've got to make sure that v is not equal to 0, v is not equal to negative 1, and v is not equal to negative 2 in this whole calculation. And those are the restrictions that I have. So I multiply this first fraction by v plus 2 over v plus 2, the second fraction by v over v, and I get two fractions that have the same denominator. And as soon as they have the same denominator, I can write them as a subtraction over that denominator. Um, somehow I've got x's in here, but pretend those are v's. So I've got 6v squared plus 2 minus 8v. And then I can simplify, I could leave this as, as it is in this third step, but I could simplify a little bit by distributing the 6 in and seeing what happens. So 6v plus 2 is going to be 6v plus 12 minus 8v. And so that 6v minus 8v is going to be negative 2v. And then the plus 12 is there. And through all of that, the denominator doesn't change. Once I've set the de common denominator, it's going to remain as it was. I could see if there's any factor of the numerator, but I don't see a factor that's going to cancel off with the denominator. So I'm quite happy with this as the final expression of the subtraction using common denominator.